Namaste. Welcome to today's session. Today we're going to talk about you. Now the reason why we are talking about you is because you matter. So let us look at um, a quote from the Bhagavad Gita that says that just like a man who discards old clothes and wears new ones, similarly we go through many stages of our lives in spite of being present in every one of them. So when you were a child, you were there. And right now, you are still here right now. So you have gone through all of these developmental stages, but yet you have been there invariably. So you are like that common denominator in every fraction. So you are like that common uh, person or the self in every experience. So therefore, you are a very important person in your life. So in every experience that you have, let's say you are having a nice meal, you are very much there. Maybe you are having a nice conversation with someone that you love, you are very much there. So your internal state or your state of being has a significant impact uh, in the way that we process our experience. For example, if you are happy, and you relate with others, naturally that relationship becomes happy. There's a very high chance of you being happy. And if you were to be unhappy, now usually the relationships that we have with others would also become unhappy. So therefore, it is very important that we take care of ourselves. So if you are unhappy, it does not matter where you are at or who you are with. And and suppose if you are happy, it also does not matter where you are and who you are with. Because whether you live in a mansion or you live in a hut, if you are happy, you are happy. So it is very important and crucial that we take care of ourselves. Because if you are not going to take care of yourself, nobody is going to take care of you. Now sometimes um, there is this nice quote from the Yajur Veda that we often uh, speak about uh, in Hindu discourses, which is basically um, a fact that it is because of your love that makes everything lovable, or rather, the love for yourself. Now, because you love yourself, therefore, you, you, you look for everything that is lovable. And if you dislike yourself and try to find love and acceptance through someone else, then you have placed the keys of happiness or the keys of your happiness in someone else's pockets. So therefore, it is time to reclaim the keys to your happiness and keep it within. And how can you do that? So in the Yajur Veda, there is a very nice approach or a method that, with which we can take care of ourselves. So the Yajur Veda says there are five important aspects in ourselves and by looking at these five aspects of ourselves we can then make our life more meaningful and also happy in other words taking care of yourself the first one is the space and the environment that you are in it also includes the way that you present yourself now all of that actually uh, refers to the first aspect which is the space and your external presentation now look at where you are living or how much time you spend in a particular space. Can that space be made better or made more conducive so that you can be comfortable and be happy? All right, that's the first one. The second one is your health. Taking care of your health through exercise, through activity, through movements. And this is something that you already know. Look at how healthy you are and how you can make yourself perhaps healthier. The third one is the amount of positive emotions that you have daily. Now, take a, just ask yourself a simple question. Do I have more positive experiences and emotions or do I have more negative emotions? And see how you can increase um, more or rather increase the, the, the intensity and the degree of positive emotions that you have in a given day. That is something you can do. And the fourth one is your intellectual engagements. Are you doing things that makes you or brings the best out of you or even looking at how you can enhance your capabilities and how well you can do a thing or a particular task better 
This also includes not just your competencies with regard to the work that you do, the relationships that you have, and also with all the other engagements that you have in your life. It also involves the quality of relationships that you actually engage in. See how you can improve the relationships that you have with your family members. And lastly is purpose and meaning. Now look at your lives and see what is it that can enhance your purpose and it can also enhance your meaning. You can certainly find meaning in certain activities or certain tasks that you do. Now by looking at all of these five aspects of your life, now you can certainly take care of yourself very easily. Just these five questions. The space and your physical presentation, that's the first one, followed by your health, followed by the positive emotions that you have, followed by the intellectual engagements with people and also the tasks that you do, and finally, your purpose and meaning. With that, Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Today we are going to talk about self-care. Self-care is a natural instinct in our mind. We have this inbuilt system of flight or fight instinct. When we face a pandemic, a life-threatening scenario, we will tend to either fight back or protect ourselves, right? So in this kind of defense mechanism, we are going to explore the spiritual method of trying to defend ourselves or protect ourselves. The opposite of self-care is self-torture. Yeah, you torture yourself, could be for whatever reasons, could be guilty or remorse kind of states of mind. You want to torture yourself, you want to harm, inflict harm on yourself. So this is a very negative approach, yeah? one extreme. So this is the mind geared towards extreme of hatred. The other extreme of self-care is selfishness. Yeah, so when the mind is selfish, you want to hoard items, you want to stock up a lot of items, you want to get the best uh, supplements, get the best food items, everything for yourself. And uh, uh, being selfish, you ignore others, yeah? you deprive others of items and goods. Uh, so this is the other extreme of self-care, we call it selfishness. So how to practice the middle way? So there's a Buddhist term, we call it loving-kindness. Yeah, loving-kindness, we avoid these uh, both extremes of selfishness and self-torture. And so the ideal practice of loving-kindness is to wish all beings well and happy. So by doing so, when we continue to cultivate this state of mind, we are actually reducing, yeah, we're trying to center, making ourselves middle, we're reducing selfishness and we are reducing this aversion, this hatred. Yeah? So by practicing loving kindness, we can transcend this ego, yeah? being selfish, and then we can truly understand uh, this self-care. Yeah? It is not that we totally ignore ourselves, we don't, we don't go to the washroom, we don't eat, we don't care about everything, no. Yeah? We still go and do our daily routine as normal, but our state of mind, yeah, our state of mind, we are in uh, equipoise, in this center, in this uh, loving kindness. So with that in mind, we can proceed our lives with kindness and compassion. Thank you. Let's recap. In our last episode, we share about how to seek suppression from being lost and anxiety by practicing self-reflection daily. We also highlighted that Taoists believe that mindfulness is vital in our daily living. We should practice to be self-contented with our existing happiness, value, and free from our thoughts. Like what we always say, the greatest joy is to be content. In Mandarin, we say, Today, our topic of sharing is about self-love, which is much related to mindfulness and self-control in Taoist belief. Self-love is a combination of action and thoughts in our daily life, such as taking care of ourselves, 
in mental and physical wellness, which is also includes of spiritual welfare and to cherish the Tao within us. I refer to Tao Te Ching, chapter 46. There is no misfortune greater than having too many desires. There is no tribulation greater than not being content. In Mandarin, we say, 最莫大于可欲, 或莫大于不知足. Tao Te Ching, chapter 46, also reminded us that if we are satisfied with what is enough, we will have abundance. In Mandarin, we say, 知足, 知足, 常足矣. The biggest problem is when people don't know when to stop and their greed kept growing. So for Taoists, we know what is enough and be content with the blessing we have and most important, we know when to stop. In Mandarin, we say, 知足, 知子. It also interpreted as, it all starts with the initial step of actions. So, all of us should practice mindfulness in everything we do. Treasure and paying attention to the moment we are living now. Slowly down your desire and daring to act. Do not expect things turns into perfection overnight. Living life simply. Some of us may set important goal in life to achieve, but some of it seems unattainable for. Goals should be set and work on it step by step by not causing harm to others and yourself. Goals should be set with a specific and measurable timeline for one to achieve and not overreacting or rushing things to happen. Always seek the balance and equality in your lifestyle. In Mandarin, we say, 做事不可急功近利. In returns, we will be rewarded with a balanced lifestyle and harmonious relationship with our loved ones and peers, and also to free from wild thoughts and wrongful action. Before I end my sharing, I refer to Tao Te Ching Chapter 2. The whole world recognizes the beautiful as the beautiful. Yet, this is only the ugly. The whole world recognizes the good as the good. Yet, this is only the bad. In Mandarin, we say, 天下皆知美,知为美,思恶矣。皆知善,知为善,思不善矣。which means, the difficult and the easy complement each other. Before action and after action follow each other. Always reminding ourselves to stay humble and not to strive with others. Let us stay united and have patience in dealing with this crisis. We should take this opportunity to restore our humanity and do good for others. Take care and stay safe. Peace be with you. Pray that you have been going well during this retreat and in this installation of care. Um, we're going to talk about yeah, how have I been receiving care? And from a Christian perspective, what care is really about? So a few questions need to be dealt with. First, are you awake to life? How aware are you of receiving life today? Does one achieve life or receive life? In a way, in other words, are you awake to the care you are receiving in life? And you realize that like life, care is not something you can earn, but a gift to be received. COVID-19 and the circuit breaker period provides a wonderful opportunity for us to be reawakened to how life has, is, and will continue to care for us eternally. From the Christian perspective, at the heart of self-care, is God's care for us. How we're being known 
loved and cared for by God. And the key to receive this care is that we're invited to invite deeply. It's encapsulated in the word presence. We're invited to be present to presence by first being present to ourselves. Being aware of all my senses, all my feelings, recognizing how I am touched by life. Of how God is touching me beyond words, but felt, sensed, and fleshed in my very being. To allow the word of God's love to become flesh in us. It is a care that is incarnated. The book of Psalms, chapter 34, verse 8, says this, Taste and see that the Lord is good. This is what, at the heart of what present, being present is about. To taste, to be able to taste and see that the Lord is good. That life is good. Because God only gives good gifts. For presence to happen, besides being awake to my senses and feelings, with awareness, I will need to make space for silence so that one can listen past our self-talk, the negative judgments and rigid ideologies and listen to the stirrings of our hearts. The Hindus will call this place Guha, cave of the heart. In this deeply familiar place, we reconnect with what real care feels like. Peace, joy, love, like a wonderful host awaiting your return home. God has never left you, only we have. Love, joy, and peace always abides caring for us if we only are present. Thus, self-care is not just simply taking a holiday and escape, coping from the stresses of life but real care into fullness, which is not achieved by simply resting, but a restfulness. One can be restful even when one washes the dishes. If we are present to ourselves and come home to the cake of our heart, we begin to realize that as we care for others, we are also cared for leading us to a restfulness in all our doing and being. There is indeed no need to strive, but simply to receive care and share the care with one another. When the ebb and flow of receiving and sharing care is disrupted in life, even our feelings of anxiety and loss are caring for us by awakening us to receive again the care that life wants to give us this moment, reminding us to come home again and again. So, we're invited to walk with a wakefulness, eat with gratitude, do your chores with presence, be still, in awareness, whatever that helps you come home often. Home cooked food is waiting. And may you go well as you continue this retreat. And I'll see you next week. Goodbye. Hello everyone, it's Mizi Wahid once again and uh, I hope you're doing well during this um, circuit breaker period. Things are um, looking positive. I think um, we know about how um, the circuit breaker is gradually coming to an end and we're gradually returning back to our normal lives. Hopefully, um, no more big issues, no more big cases are going to turn up. Let's pray for the best. Today, while we are um, you know, hoping for the best. I think one thing that many of us may have struggled to deal with, what we've neglected to do, is to take care of ourselves. And so today's topic is on self-love. To um, elaborate further on this, I would like to use one of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him's um, saying. It's one of his famous sayings, in fact. Um, and this has been used in many books 
um, written by religious experts where they're looking at common ground, similar universal values that are shared across different faiths. And this is a hadith. So a hadith is a basically a prophetic saying or something that he did or something that someone else did and he was around and he agreed with it. Um, and these have been documented extensively by people from across many generations until the compilations uh, reach us. So the saying goes, um, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه. It's in Arabic, which means none of you have truly believed until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. Okay, so um, some say that this is the golden rule of do unto others as you would like others do unto you. Correct, uh, and and we all very much aware of that. But I guess what we're normally missing out on this is the fact that, um, you know, he wants us to treat others based on how we want to be treated. So the only way for us to get to that point of knowing what other people want is to first know what we want, is to first know what we like, is to first know how we prefer to be treated by others, is to know what makes us feel uncomfortable, um, is to know how we like to be left alone during certain times, right? To, in order for us to love others better, we need to know how to love ourselves first. And this requires us to take care of ourselves. Um, and if we do not master this uh, ability, this knowledge, this skill on how to take care of ourselves, I don't think we'll ever be able to improve and enhance the relationships we have with those around us, okay? So let's try to do something. I challenge everyone, including myself, to come up with a list of things that we can um, reflect upon and say, okay, I, I like to be left alone when, I'm at, when it's night time because that's when I get to sit down, to deeply reflect on my day, um, to check on myself, to see if I need extra rest, um, to sleep early, to eat well, um, to socialize once in a while. Um, it's a balance of many things, right? And then you need to know what your preferences are. Um, once you know all of this, it's going gonna, it's gonna to do you um, a lot of good in terms of how you uh, build your, other, your relationships with other people. Okay? So none of you would truly believe until you love for yourself what you love for others. So it has to start from loving yourself. Okay? So I hope that helps for now. Uh, and I'll, I can't wait to um, share with you more in the next video. Take care and peace be upon you. Hello everyone. Um, welcome to another session with me, Ustaz Mizi Wahid. And for today's spiritual practice, I would like all of us in the spirit of wanting to take care of ourselves a little bit better, to begin by asking ourselves, how much have we actually done in the last six months, in the last one year, since we last properly took care of ourselves, since we last prioritized ourselves ahead of others, ahead of other responsibilities, ahead of other needs. Because if we have been neglecting ourselves, we would know it. We would know it based on the present state that we find ourselves in. If you feel like your mind is all over the place, there's so much clutter in your heart, in your mind. If you feel like um, you have, you know, very little left in terms of your energy, um, you can't be creative as you normally are. So for today's spiritual practice, I would like everyone to begin by taking a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil I prefer the physical type, but if you want to type it down on your tablet or your smartphone, you can do that as well. I would like you to list down how you feel. This is the first step. How you are feeling right now with respect to how much or how little you've been taking care of yourself. You might say, I feel extremely fatigued. I feel unloved. I feel um, 
you know, physically tired. I feel mentally fatigued. I feel emotionally exhausted. Like, describe the feelings first. That's the first part of this exercise. I want you to list down how you're feeling. The second part is that I would like you to now ask yourself um, the opening of what I said earlier, which is please check, do a self-reflection and check. When was the last time you actually did something to take care of yourself, okay, to prioritize yourself? Was it last week? Was it last night? Was it a month ago? Was it before COVID-19 happened? Was it a year ago? Or for some of us, unfortunately, we can't even remember when was the last time we actually did something for ourselves. Okay? So that's the second step. The third step is, I would like to um, suggest that we list down some examples of things that we actually enjoy doing. But we have been delaying, procrastinating, putting them off because we were so busy with other stuff. You see, life is about how we prioritize our responsibilities. And we all carry many roles, don't we? Some of us are, you know, uh, mothers and fathers. Some of us are husbands and wives. Some of us are children taking care of our elderly and aging parents. Some of us are professionals, teachers. Um, some of us are civil servants. We, we have many multiple roles that we play. Some of us are community leaders and so on and so forth. So there are so many responsibilities that we're carrying that sometimes we get a little bit overwhelmed as we forget to insert somewhere amidst all of those responsibilities the need to take care of ourselves because that is very important, okay? So I want you to list down between three to five things that you really enjoy doing. For example, you say, I enjoy my alone time at night, okay? So you may have time for yourself at night. Sometimes you're just too exhausted. You come back from work and you completely fall asleep, right? Um, and sometimes you come back home and the first thing you have to do is to take care of everyone else at home. And before you know it, you have no time for yourself left. So I want you to like write that down. Even as simple as that. I, I appreciate the one hour that I have to myself every night. Something like that. The second example could be that you love going to a cafe, you know, sitting down and having a nice cup of coffee, a lovely piece of cake, just and while listening to some nice music, for example. That could be one. Um, or some of you like to socialize. So your idea of a good time for yourself is to actually hang out with your best friend, hang out with your sister or brother. Um, that you can, you can window shop or you can go shopping or you can sit down and, and, and buy. When you go shopping, it means you buy something nice for yourself perhaps. Or when you um, sit down and have a real deep conversation with someone that you love, someone that you care about. That could also be an example. Um, and the last thing that I want you to do is to put it in a schedule. Okay, so once you figure out some of these things that you want to do, going to a spa, you know, get a hair salon, things like that, anything that makes you feel good, that you take care of yourself, I want you to schedule it so that you know that every week you would have time to at least do one of those things or a few of those things, if not all. Or some of these things, you may get them daily, some of these things you get them weekly, and some of these things you get to do them once a month. But it, it works a lot better when you actually list them down, write them down, you get to see it and you insert it in your calendar, it becomes real. Everything that is scheduled becomes real and you know it increases the chances of them happening. So in today's session about self-care, um, this is my um, sharing and I hope that you'll be able to practice it. And if you love it, if you are able to benefit from it, do let me know, yeah? So take care, I'll see you soon. Uh, bye bye.